Hey guys, what's up? I'm Megan and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to cut shapes. Specifically, if you are like me and don't have any sort of dance background. Before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps me out, helps me know I'm not just shouting out into the ether. So, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and let's get started. slash background. Cutting shapes is a style of dance that I believe originated in the UK. Um, cutting shapes is like kind of a type of shuffling, but not all shuffling is cutting shapes. And it's important to make that distinction because some people will get really upset about it if you call cutting shape shuffling. Shuffling is more like, like kind of glidey kind of footwork. And cutting shapes is more you're using your body and your legs to make shapes, if that makes sense. So for cutting shapes and shuffling really, the first moves that you want to know, you really want to get these moves in your body are the running man, the T-step, and the Charleston. Okay, these are, you know, these are the meat or the veggie patty of the burger, you know, the substance of what shuffling is. So I'm going to start with teaching you just the regular running man, and this can be used in both cutting shapes and shuffling, but then I'm going to teach you the cutting shapes specific, specific, the cutting shapes specific variation of it. So what does the running man look like? You've probably seen The Running Man, you know, on TV, or I don't know if you were alive in the 80s. The Running Man's basically like, like that. Like you're running in place, but you're not moving. What I want you to think of with The Running Man is there's a point in front of you, there's a point underneath you, like where you are, and then there's a point behind you. And basically, you are going to be each of your feet is going to be sliding between those three points. You want to be in this, like, this transition point is pretty much going to be between most moves. You'll hit it on the and, so you'll go out and out and out and out and and when you're on the and, your foot's in that middle point that I just showed you. So, the points of the running man are you're in that, it's called, some people call it UTP, some call it your uh, perch, whatever you wanna call it, your figure four. This guy, you start with this guy here, and then this guy, whatever foot is on the ground is in that center point that I'm talking about right below you. But basically you start from this perch, and then you put this foot, kick it out at the same time while you're sliding your bottom foot back. So ready, and, because this is always on the and, and one, and one. See what I did there? And then you do the same on the other side. You slide the back foot forward to the transition point, and then this leg scoots backward. Bump. And then same thing, this one goes out and this leg goes back, whoa. <laughs> so you see what I mean with those three points? Like on the out, on the whole numbers of the counts, so like one, you'll be on the outermost two of the three points. And then on the and you up to the middle. And then back out, you know, front point, back point. And if it, really helps you, you can actually tape those points on the ground. But a thing people that I notice tend to let go by the wayside is sliding this foot back. So you're not going to get that running in place effect unless you slide the foot back. I think like to think of it as like an up, out, up, out, 
up, out, out, up, out, up, out. Let's try that for eight counts. And yeah. And I'll start on the and. So remember, the and is this like kind of figure four situation right here. So ready? Five and six and seven and eight and one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good job. Just pause, rewind, slow it down. You can watch it at half speed on YouTube. Whatever you need to do, just know that if you don't have a dance background, you're probably not going to get this move for like, like it's gonna feel weird for probably weeks, if not months, okay? A lot of those professional shufflers and shapers have like either a cheer or like a 10 year dance background, which it's good for them, but like, just temper your expectations, you know? If you work like an office job or you've never done anything physical, like it's okay if you're not <laughs> breaking it down the first time you try a new dance move, okay? Allow yourself to look silly and just try something new. It's good to be a beginner at something. Anyway, I digress. Let us do another eight count of the running man. We'll start on the and again. Five and six and seven and eight and one, two, three and four, five, six, seven, eight. Another thing to mention is you want your weight to be in the middle this whole time. So you don't want to be leaning too far forward or leaning too far back. Okay. The whole time, even when you're going out, you want your weight to be centered. And for this, more standard Melbourne style of running man, your weight's going to be on your toes the whole time. It's kind of the illusion of being on a flat foot, but really you want your weight to be on your toes. You'll have more control that way. Let's do it one more time, a little bit faster, and then I'm gonna move on to the cutting shapes variation. All right, so out, weight centered, up, Okay, I forgot to count it. <laughs> Seven and eight and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nice, heck yeah. If you're at the beginner stage, don't really worry about your arms. Just try to kind of like lean the opposite shoulder to the opposite knee, just for now. I am going to move on to a more of a cutting shape style running man. So the cutting shapes running man looks like this. It's the same thing as the running man I just taught you, except when your front leg comes out, you land on your heel, and at the same time, your weight's going to be on your back leg. So for the standard running man, you're more kind of like this. Cutting shapes is more of a Right? It's the same thing I just taught you. So you're in that transition point and you kick this leg out to your heel at the same time as this leg goes back. You should kind of be bent into your back leg and your weight should be there. But then you transfer to the middle and then same thing on this side, go to your heel. So middle, out, middle, out. See that? This is more of a shaper flow, right? You know, the Melbourne's like kind of flowy and the shape's like, <sighs> yeah, I'm hitting those triangles. <laughs> Let's try the cutting shapes running man. Again, eight count, I'll count you in. We'll start on the and. Five and six and seven and eight. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Good job. Did you get it? I think you got it. If not, pause, rewind, let it sink in, do what you need to do. But we're gonna try it again a little bit faster. Five, and six, and seven, and eight, and one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And for this one, kind of same thing with your upper body. You're, you know, doing the opposite of whichever leg is in front, kind of towards. Yeah. But again, it can take like months to years to get your upper body, so just focus on the footwork at first if there's too much going on. Let's do it one more time a little bit faster and then we will move on to the G-step, all right? Five and six and seven and eight and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Boom. All right, that is your running man and cutting shapes of running man. Now I'm going to teach you the T-step. The T-step is a great move for traveling. It's a very versatile. So, and it looks like this. So conceptually, when you're cutting shapes, you really want to get used to doing this kind of toe heel kind of transfer with your feet, right? A lot of your moves are going to be doing this kind of transfer motion. So you really want to get comfortable doing that. So if you just, like one of my favorite drills is to just stand here and just switch your weight from your heel to your toe. And then do it on the other side. I would recommend getting really familiar with that, really strong on that, before you move on to the T-step, honestly. And you can just do that anywhere, you know, standing in line at the supermarket, whatever. Just get used to transferring your weight. Bonus points if you can do it with just one foot on the ground. It's hard. <laughs> the T-step, you're literally just doing that and tapping your foot down. The T-step is the same thing. You get into that transition point and at the same time, as you tap down with this foot, you do that heel-toe kind of move, motion with the bottom foot. So ready? Tap down. And then at the same time I come up with this leg back to the transition point, this leg is going to transfer the weight onto the heel, or the toe, whichever, no, it's on the toe. Yeah, it's on the toe. And then I'm gonna go down and transfer to the heel again. Whoa now back up and then do it on the other side transition point out while this leg does this little thing up out up. it's hard to do slow <laughs> I like when I'm first whenever you're first learning out I recommend to just do it with the like the point of the point of your toe you can also do like a rock kind of vibe but just just focus on that toe just do it on this. Just keep things simple for yourself is the overall message of this, okay? Don't try to do anything too fancy before you get the basics down. It'll end up making you learn something with bad form, and it's way easier to learn something new with good form than it is to replace a bad habit with a good habit, if that makes sense. So let's try the T-step. You start in this transition point, and then this toe is gonna do that little heel toe, and this toe is gonna go out, and I'm gonna fall. Okay, ready? So this is the and. And one, and two, and three, four. Now let's try it on the other side. And one, two, three, four. I don't know if this is how you're supposed to do it, but for me it helps to counterbalance by leaning to the opposite side of whichever direction you're going. So like for example, this way I'll lean that way. And this way I'll lean this way. And you really wanna make sure when you're doing your T-step that you're not forgetting to come back into that transition point because otherwise you're just gonna be tapping on the ground, which doesn't look as good in my opinion. So you really want to make sure you're, right? Since the running man is more of like a, like a out and up, this is more of a side and up. And for arms, I like to 
do the same thing with my legs, you know, go out. But you can do whatever, whatever. This is not an arm tutorial, trust me on that. Um, so let's try it going four counts this way and then we'll go this side. Five and six and seven and eight and one, two, three, four. Nice. Now let's go this way. And one, two, three, four. Nice, 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 nice. Now that you kind of know the T-step or have paused the video and have gone over that a couple times, let me show you how to transition. So like how to switch from right and left. So how you do that is, let's say I'm doing my T-step, T-step, and you see how I'm in this transition point? It's very easy to just hop forward into a running man and then take the back leg up to the transition and then start T-stepping that side. So long story short, transitioning from each side with a T-step is just one running man. And you're going to use whatever the leg is in the transition point to hop out. And then whenever leg is back, you bring up and then start going that way. That's it. That's it. And an easy drill. I don't really have enough space to do this, but you can do like, you know, seven counts, seven and a half, one way, running man, seven and a half counts that way, running man. You see what I mean? Let's do, let's do it actually with four counts. So I'm going to do three and a half T-steps going this way, that running man transition, and then go the other way. All right. Five and six and seven and eight and one, two, three, four and one, two, three, four and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Right, you see how I'm kind of hopping out there? That's how you transition those moves. I recommend once you're learning the moves down, learning, I mean obviously learning how to transition. At least for me, it was almost harder to learn how to transition between the moves than it was to learn the actual moves. And what's really going to help you with that is hitting that transition point, right? Just think pretty much most of the time when you're shuffling shaping on the and, you're going to be in like some kind of figure four transition point. And it won't be the case when you're doing any like funky combos, but during the basics, that's what you're doing, all right? So make life easier on yourself. Train yourself to go back to the transition point, okay? Let's do that same drill one more time a little faster, and then I'm gonna move on to the Charleston. Again, I know this video is getting kind of long. If you want me to like, I'll do a whole drill video on one of these moves if you want me to, please just leave it in the comments. So. We're gonna do four this way, running man transition, four this way. Five and six and seven and eight. And one, two, three, four, oh. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You might learn that you're more comfortable on one side than the other, that's totally normal. Just try to do it on both sides. Like you might, like if you're right dominant, your right side will probably be stronger and that's totally fine. Just like don't only do moves on your right foot, at least like 30% of the time, pretend to drill them on your left, okay? But no one's gonna come for you if you can only do tricks with your right leg. So just do what makes you happy really is what I'm saying. Anyway, I hope that T-step tutorial makes sense because now we're going to go to the final what I would consider the final basics cutting shapes move, and that is the Charleston. The Charleston you're probably familiar with is more of like an old school move, maybe from like, you know, the 1920s, but basically the Charles looks like this. If you can tell, you're on the bottom leg, you're doing that same exact kind of heel toe kind of twisty flow that I was talking about before. Right? So what you're doing with the Charleston is, hold on. Yeah, you're doing that twisty motion 
whoa, just see motion out. Then you cross the up leg in front while you twist and then go out while you're twisting the bottom. So I like to think of that as your knees are towards each other and your knees are going away. Knees towards, knees away. So like, you can see how when I'm on the ground, my knees are away from each other. And then you go, but your weight is going to be in your toe for this, just FYI. So my knees are facing away from each other. My weight is on my toes. And then I'm going to go out at the same time as I twist my knees together and I twist this foot kind of going in. And then the same thing, my knees are facing away from each other, but now they're facing together, bop. And you really wanna keep for like kind of that old school Charleston vibe, if you will, you wanna keep your knees close together. So let's do that from the back. We'll start with this leg. Whoa, that's hard to do fast. We'll start with our legs facing apart, okay? So we'll go out, cross and forward, knees out, then take the back leg out, cross and forward, legs out. And really, that knee tip is really going to help you. Like, just focus on the direction of your, like, knees and the rotation of your um, quads. Bump, bump. And it's going to look better, A, the more you keep your knees together, and B, the higher you can get that foot up. You're going to be in that kind of up position on the and. So, yeah, yeah, so you're gonna wanna be hitting down on the whole beats. Let's try this, starting from the and with the right leg. Five, and six, and seven, and eight, and one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whew. That is a balance challenge. And with my arms, I'm just kind of, what, what am I doing? Yeah, I'm just kind of like the running man, just bringing the opposite shoulder a little bit forward. Um, but you can really do whatever your body does naturally as long as it looks good and you're staying balanced. Let's try this again a little bit faster. Five and six and seven and eight and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Boom. Now you know the Charleston. Just for luck, we're gonna try it one more time, a little bit faster, and let us go. Five and six and seven and eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yay! I hope this tutorial made sense. I hope it's not too long. This is kind of shaking out to be a long video. So if you stuck with me to the end, I love and appreciate you. Don't give up. If you don't look like a professional shaper slash dancer your first month, like please do not get discouraged, okay? Let yourself be a beginner. Let yourself try something new. Let yourself even be bad at something. It's okay and it's good for you. It's good for your ego. It's just good to learn a new skill. Thank you for watching this. I'm Megan. If you liked this video, you thought it was helpful, I hope you'll consider subscribing because it really helps me out. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.